All right, hello everybody. So before I begin, let's talk about the Battle Pass Egos because one of them is particularly useful for your Linden Gregor. Uh, let's start off with Yi Sang's one first because I'm already here. So Yi Sang's one is a Zayin Ego, so it's your first slot, replaces Crow's Eye View, and it's going to be a 15 plus 8, 23. 23 in a 3 AoE, it randomly inflicts 6 plus Gloom Resonance times 1.5 sinking between targets. That is honestly quite a lot of sinking actually. Like if you think about it right, Ramsheng corroded, will apply 10 sinking potency and I believe 8 count, right? If I remember correctly. Well, this shit here is 6 plus Gloom Resonance times 1.5. So if you manage to get 5 Gloom Resonance, and then you times that by 1.5, that's basically 7.5. So I think it will round down, or I don't know if it rounds up, but you will get like 7 sinking between targets. Which is not bad, honestly. But I mean, it's random, so it's better if it's like less targets, so that you can uh, apply more sinking to the single target that you hit. And it also has a bind effect on it, which I seem, it seems to be a, a recurring theme here, that there's going to be a lot of binding in this season, because the final ego for Heathcliff is actually called Binds. So it's most likely going to be a bind and uh, sinking season, from what I can tell. But yeah, this ego, just very solid. And the most important part is that it is Gloom. Tree, Sloth, Tree, Gloom, and this ego is Gloom. That's very important, because if you want to use Spice Bush Yisang, he does not have a single Gloom skill. He has Sloth, he has Glut, and he has Pride. But he does not have Gloom from what I can remember, so he cannot really force uh, Gloom Resonance, which is why I think that this is going to be a very very important ego for him to force the Gloom Resonance. And in addition, his passive here, if the target has 6 plus Sinking Potency and Clash Power plus 1, if the target has 4 plus Sinking Count, getting Clash Power plus 1 is just helpful. It's just additional clash power for your spice push. So this is just W, honestly. It's a W ego. Helps you to get your Gloom Resonance in your sinking team, applies sinking between targets, applies binding for maybe some future bind shenanigans, and is also a Zayn ego and is super easily charged with your uh, Sloth character and your Gloom characters. Yeah, really, really strong ego, honestly. Alright, then moving on, let's talk about Gregor's ego, Bygone Days. So Gregor's Ego at first glance looks absolutely dog water. Why? Because this is a Teft Ego, it costs 6 costs, it only does 20 plus 4, and it's a single attack win. So this Ego already looks completely ass, right? Well, what you are paying these 6 resources for is this part. After attack, you heal 15 SP to self and 2 other allies with the least SP. If the target survives this attack, Consume 3 sinking count on the target and heal additional SP equal to the sinking potency on the target. Max SP heal 20. Take note this line. Heal additional SP. So, I suspect, right? You take this 20 and you add it to this. And that will be 35 SP to self and two other allies. That is a fat SP heal actually. And it is really, really good. The other part here, if the target is defeated, you inflict 3 sinking and 1 curse on 3 random enemies. For people who don't know what curse is, it's kind of ass. It has a random chance of giving you attack power down, defense power down, offense level down, or defense level down. The only interesting ones are offense level, defense level, and attack power. Attack power just by itself is great. Defense power is for defense skills, which are not exactly a problem in this game. The next one is offense level down, which is good, but you need 3. So 2 is 1 off. And then defense level down, also you need about 3. But I mean 2 is still like a bit more damage I guess, but it's still like kind of ass. But yeah, you are randomly getting one of these. So it's honestly not worth it to try and go for these things here. It's not significant enough. Corrosion effect, not that important. Applies Gloom Fragility. If your Gregor happens to be first, you can try to go and force this and you can get 4 Gloom Fragility. 4 Gloom Fragility is crazy. If you can get that and your Gregor is somehow first in line, that is really, really good, honestly. If you can get that, this is worth. But if you can't get that, then no, don't bother. And this line here, if the target has Curse, deal 50% more damage. Well, this thing also inflicts 3 Curse after you hit it. And then if you want to go and corrode it again, you can, but like, I don't think you should use this for damage. Use it for the SP heal, or you can use it for Gloom Fratch if you're able to get Resonance and you are first. Because this is a this turn Gloom Fragility. Very, very specific, but if you can get it, it's a lot of extra damage. Because that's four 
uh, for Gloom Fragility. 40 plus A4 dynamic, A40 40 percent dynamic increase in damage here. And then passive, last one is after he attacks and you defeat a target, you will get an eagle resource. And you gain one additional for every five sinking potency and count on the target. So yeah, this is honestly a nice bonus. Uh, you use this once and then now you have this passive forever. And then you just slap on your Linden Gregor and then you're pretty much good to go. This is the pairing for Linden. You must use this ego. It's really very solid. Yep. Right. So now let's move on to Linden Gregor. Okay, so Linden Gregor, why did I say that previous ego was so important? It's because, right, it heals your SP by so much that it will trigger your passive really well. And this passive also requires 3 Gloom Resonance. Turn start, you gain 1 damage up and 1 fragile for every 5 SP difference between this turn start and the last turn start. So let's say you started with 0 SP, right? And you pop that ego one time. Then you gain, let's say, maybe you have 10 sinking potency on the target, so you gain about... Uh, 25 SP onto this Gregor. 25 is the perfect number. Why? Because every 5 SP difference, you gain 1 damage up and 1 fragile. The difference here is calculated by taking your previous turn start and your last turn start. Sorry, it's, it's this turn start and your last turn start. It's, it's flipped here. Yep. So basically, it will check. Oh, at your last turn start, you started with 0 SP. So you pop your ego, now you heal 25 SP. So you are going to go. 225 SP this turn and that means that you have uh, 25 SP difference and so we will give you 5 damage up and 5 fragility so if someone breathes on Gregor he dies but at the same time if he breathes on them he does quite a bit of damage because that is 50% extra damage up yeah that is really really strong furthermore his resonance here look at this deal 2% more damage for every sinking potency maximum of 40% Wow, 40% is 10% more than what I would have expected. It's usually 30%, but they made it 40%. Maybe it's because you need to resonate in order to get this part. And you need to get about 20 sinking potency on the target. And you need to maintain it. Very, very easy with Echoes of the Manor and your Rhyme Shank. So this is just a strong, strong passive. If you can get the triggers and if you're running him in the sinking gang. So really, really good stuff here. Yeah, the only way to get this huge difference is honestly only through SP healing. You Most of the time, if you do not use SP healing, you will only get one damage up. Which is still fine, honestly. It's still fine. But if you want a really big damage turn, you want to get a lot of damage up, you need to lower your SP to a certain level and then boost it up immediately to 25. You need either minus 25 or you need plus 25 in order to get the bonus here, Endless Nightmares. Still a little bit tricky to get in my opinion because if I hit 45 SP, right, I do not know how I'm going to lower my own SP unless this skill tree absorption actually means that you can nuke your own SP. If you can nuke your own SP, then it's really, really good because you want to lower your SP and you will get damage up for it. It's actually pretty decent. But yeah, if otherwise, like the only way is to just nuke your SP and don't heal the SP up until the next turn so it's like you gotta go really really sane and then you gotta go really insane and then you gotta go sane again then really insane and so on and so forth to get really big spikes in your damage from the damage up yeah so still a little bit tricky but that ego that gregor has is a very solid sp heal anyway so you can use it at round start or you can use it like maybe later when your gregor has a little bit more sp and then you can boom get five damage up prepare for a nuke turn something like that Support passive, one ally with the least SP, loses 5 SP, then gains 1 gloom damage up. It's fine. This is gloom damage up, it's fine. Right, so let's talk about the coins for this character. Clashing power is definitely DPS level. Very, very good stuff here. Right, uh, Saber Slash is going to be a 11 by default. Coin power plus 2 for uh, if you have 6 sinking. So that will give you 8 plus 5, 13. Another 2 clashing power will make it so that you have a 15 on your skill 1 if you have sinking on the target. Make sure you have sinking count and sinking. Both are important to sinking status. Uh, for a lot of other statuses, it's usually only one thing. It's like burn count only or burn only. But for sinking, it's going to be sinking potency and sinking count matters. You need both of those lines. Right, and then this skill also inflicts 3 sinking potency. Skill 2 is going to be a 16 by default. And then you get coin power plus 1. And then you also get clash power plus 1. Maximum of 2. So 7, four, uh, 7, 14, 14, 18. And then after that, plus 2 clash power, 20. You got 20 on your skill 2 if you meet all conditions. And the strongest part about this skill is that if you clash with it and win, you get 2 sinking count. 
So that's a full refund. And then you also inflict three sinking count. So that's a plus three sinking count. Whew. Delicious. And if the target has five plus sinking, you also gain one haste next turn. It's just W all around this skill. Very, very powerful Gloom skill. Very, very strong. Definitely want to use this skill as much as possible. Next one, skill three. Skill three is probably uh, weaker than skill two, I'm gonna admit. Uh, the coin power wise is very strong, so damage output will be very, very good. But the weakness of this skill is that his on use is clash power, not coin power. While skill two still has coin power and clash power on it. Yeah, it feels kind of bad that this skill does not have coin power. So what happens is clash power plus one for every three sinking, maximum of three. By default, it's going to be a 16. 3, 6, 9, 12, 12, 16. 16, so you plus three, that's going to be a 19 for a skill three. That's pretty all right. And you will be able to get a plus three sinking count if you stagger or spread the sinking count to two other enemies if you defeat the target. So you should try to use skill three as more of a finisher move. It can clash pretty okay, preferably you just want to go for a stagger or a defeat with this move. Because if you do not defeat or stagger, there is no other sinking count on this thing. You will be mostly relying on your on-hit effects here to trigger Echoes of the Manor to get plus one sinking count in order to make it not so negative, that's pretty much it. For the fourth coin, Absorb 10 sinking, have not tested yet, I will get to the testing. If you've tested already, feel free to let me know. And then you also gain one plus coin boost and three damage up, that's a fat amount of damage up. Because if you consider 3 damage up here, and this damage up passive here, you can get really high damage ups. And that could make this Gregor actually compensate for having only a 2 coin move here. But not really. 2 coin move, not as it's, never, it's not really going to be very easy to out damage like a 3 coin move. But having all of this damage up, like up to 5 here, and a potential 3 here if you are able to get the absorption, it's kind of W. The problem with this part, right, is that it's a 50% chance and I believe someone said in the previous video, 50% chance so that you can actually sink in real life, I agree. If you do not hit this and you don't get the damage up and the plus coin boost, you will want to sink in real life. Because this is just a super feels bad for not triggering. I do not know why this thing is here. Maybe like one of the IDs will make it so that this 50% become 100% or something like that. I don't really know what they're trying to cook here with this 50% shenanigans here. But yeah, essentially what you want to do is use skill 3 to kill people, use skill 2 as your main DPS tool because it's very positive syncing, and your skill 1 is just a solid clasher with one potency on it, and it will not really affect your syncing count too much because Echoes of the Mana can still trigger on the coin here. Defense-wise, you have a 14 evade, and you can get coin power up to 3, so that's going to be a 13 plus 4, 17 evade, very very powerful for Mirror Dungeon. Passive, I talked about them already, yep. So overall, this character is solid, damage dealer, solid clasher. He is restricted by his coins, but in exchange, he has many ways to get damage ups. I feel like maybe there are a few more pieces missing for this sinking team to make sense, because I think it's a bit hard for them to get the SP difference passive here. Uh, they will need to start low SP, go to high, and then they need to go back to low. And the, when they go back to low, they cannot really heal back up. Uh, if they heal back up, then the turn start and last turn start effect will not trigger properly. Like if you go 45 and then you use your ego and you go back to 45, it won't trigger because it's based on the turn start and last turn start SP. Yep. So yeah, this character is going to need a few more pieces I feel or maybe you need to pop a wild ego or something in order to trigger this passive. I don't know yet. Right. So I think this character is pretty damn solid. Uh, I do not know if there's any interesting like sanity changes. I haven't really checked out those but I'm just here to talk about the kits and the clashing in general. Uh, I want to say that uptight tree for this character is actually pretty solid. Because if you go to Uptight 3, right, you can pretty much get uh, decent clashing power already. You lose out, I think, on coin power for your skill 2 here. Yeah, you don't get the coin power, so you won't get it's, uh, a lot of damage. Your skill 1 also loses some clashing power. Your skill 3 still gets clashing power. So ultimately, this character still kind of functions pretty okay. It's just that uh, you do lose some of the numbers here. So you still ideally want to Uptight 4, but I think he's very good as a clasher already at Uptight 3. So if you want to budget him, it's totally fine. Right, next character, let's talk about Faust. I think she's really good. Like, this is a top tier 2 star. Uh, why do I think so? It's because if you slap her in the sinking team, she actually has some very good clashing. Starting off with skill 1, 11 by default. Get this, see, uh, get the condition, you get the coin power plus 1, 5, 10, 13. Alright, 13 on the skill 1. Then your skill 2, you get the coin power and the clash power. Right now, it's going to be a 5, 10, 14. That's not great. Coin power plus 1 will make it a 16. Clash power will make it a 17. And then your skill 3 is going to be really mediocre beforehand. It's 2, 4, 6, 8, 8 plus 4, 12. But if you get a condition, you get coin power plus 2 onto a 4 coin skill. That's really good. 
4, 8, 12, 16, 16, 20 on the skill tree. Very, very solid for a two star ID. Honestly, like, can you think of. I think only like Lob Corp files can like higher roll than that, I think, for a two star. Yeah, but this is already really, really solid for a two star ID, honestly. Yep. And then besides that, right, this skill also inflicts three sinking count and inflicts two echoes of the mana. I think I mentioned that I was hoping it was three echoes of the mana in the previous video, but. 2 is still fine because if you apply 3 Echoes of the Mana like right now, then you wait until Echoes of the Mana is on its last charge. You use skill 3, you will refresh the Echoes of the Mana next turn with 2 charges of it. And what happens is that by that time, right, Otis will have cycled 5 times. 5 times is enough to go and get your skill 3 into your hand. So I think that this 2 is fine, it just means that you must use this character. You must use her in the actual party so that your Echoes of the Mana, you have to manage it properly. Make sure you don't use this skill tree until Echoes of the Mana is on its last charge. So there's a little bit of thinking when you think about the skill trees for Otis and for Faust because they are both butlers and they need to maintain this for the rest of the lords, the rest of the sinkers to go and use their skills. Yeah. So the butlers are supporting by being on the field. Very, very nice. And if the target has Echoes of the Manor, you will inflict plus 3 sinking count as well, making this a plus 6 sinking count in total. Very, very good stuff here. Skill 2. Oh, by the way, uh, this plus 6, right, can be even a plus 7 because of this sinking count line here. It might trigger Echoes of the Manor. So yeah, it's really massive. Right, back to skill 2. Inflict plus 3 sinking count, positive plus 1. Very, very good. And it can be even a positive plus 2 because you trigger Echoes of the Manor. Skill 1 can be, uh, it's going to be a minus 2 usually. But you can trigger this and get a minus one instead. Minus two is fine. You are getting a lot of sinking uh, count application from Echoes and from other characters. So this is honestly a fine skill. And of course, the defense is Gloom, same as Linden. Linden is also a Gloom defense. And that's very, very good. And this character has a very solid defense because for a lot of two stars, they don't usually get 20 defense. For a lot of three stars, if they're tanked, they get 20 something defense. So for this support, right? If the target is sinking like this, you gain coin power plus 7, making it a 13. 13 plus 7 will be 20. So you get 20 on your guard skill. So she can take a hit. 200 HP, 37 speed. Yeah, I think she can take a hit. Pretty alright. Furthermore, the passive. Solid. Oh my god. The passive is solid. Look at this. Look at the bottom one. If the target has echoes of the mana, you inflict 3 sinking instead. Oh my god, dude. Woo! This instead, right, does mean that this Clash Win effect here will be 3 sinking on target 3 times per turn. Oh my god. It's owned. You don't need to resonate for this part. You just need to own Gloom. And Gloom is super free in the sinking team. So think about it. If you already apply Echoes of the Mana with one of your butlers, then pretty much, right, when Faust clashes, she inflicts 3 sinking on the target 3 times per turn. But she needs to win the Clash. Uh, you do need more... Um, you need, you need more actions on her if you want to get more than one time per turn. But yeah, it's still a solid plus three here. And remember that she is applying Echoes of the Manor and she is also applying uh, quite a lot of sinking count to help you stack out that sinking count to ridiculous levels. Yep. So this character just overall super solid. She's not like super potency. You will have to find other sources, but they did give us an ego recently, the Yi Sang ego, that, to help to apply more potency. They also have Rhymeshank to apply potency. They also have... Um, I can't remember who else applies potency. But yeah, we do have a lot of different sources of potency now from the Egos mainly. So I think something like a Yi Sang spam with a uh, Dichi Rodion spam will be very, very strong for stacking the potency to a ridiculous level. While having all of these other uh, sources of sinking will help to slowly stack it up because all of your party members are helping to stack up the sinking. So you will be able to get your 99 pretty quick, in my opinion, because of Dichi, as well as the Ego, as well as Yi Sang, as well as his Ego. Yeah. So this character overall, just a very, very solid character. Not as much sinking potency as I would have hoped because it's a clash win effect, meaning you need to clash three different enemies from what I can tell. And then after that, yeah, all of his skills here is just super positive sinking count. So it's just really, really good character. Uptight 3 does not make her a good clasher. So you do want to uptight for her. She loses all of her on use lines pretty much. So you do want to uptight for her. Yeah. So recommendation is definitely go and get these two characters here. And for the battle pass, the egos are really, really good. Bygone Days is really, really strong for Yi Sang because you get a Gloom Ego off the bat. And then the free ego is going to be Gregorus, which is just supposed to be paired with Linden, and you should use it with Linden. Yep. Okay, so that is going to...
All right, I realized I forgot to talk about support passives and uh, well, when one ally with the least SP loses 5 SP and then gains 1 gloom damage up. Hmm, one ally with the least SP loses 5 SP. Hmm, I wonder who could use this. And then I go over to Faust and I have when one ally with the least SP hits an enemy with 5 plus sinking, the ally heals 3 SP on hit. This is really good, honestly. Really, really good for sinking characters. But the real interesting one is this support passive here. Least SP loses 5 SP and gains gloom damage up. Hmm. 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 Okay, that's enough hums. Alright, so basically, I think you can cook with Potential Man. I know I talked about Potential Man when he was first released and now it's looking like he has potential again. So I feel like I don't know anymore. Well yeah that's my summary of this it's passive. Potential Man could use that minus SP to make sure he stays below zero and I think if you slap Lyndon Gregor on your support passive bench running uh, sun shower heath is not a trap because minus 5 sp is actually quite a lot oh man <laughs> i did oh man i i can't believe i can't believe it's happening again <laughs> potential man is returning holy shit that'll be it for this uh banner reviews hope you guys enjoy the story it is hype i'm very angry that they ended it on a cliffhanger because i really want to see the end of the story all right so that's gonna be it i will not spoil you because a lot of people might not have cleared the storyline yet Right, so that's going to be it for this video guys. Thanks for watching. Good luck on your pools if, or good luck on your farming. We're going to go and get these characters like right now. And uh, enjoy the story. Alright, bye bye everyone. See you guys next time.